Paul, Eric, I want to talk now about the quality of answers that we get from ChatGPT. You know, I've, I've played around with it a little. I think a lot of people have. But how deep an understanding of legal issues do AI chatbots actually have? I mean, one of the hardest things in law school is actually pulling a, a ratio out of a case and determining the principle out of a case. I understand it could summarize a case, but how good are these AI technologies at getting at the nuanced issues of determining things like jurisdiction? How much of that is taken into account in the responses we get? Um, so short answer, at the moment, I think they're not great. So to my mind, ChatGPT is, and, and similar technologies are much better for um, doing a thing than answering a question. So as a silly example, um, I was sitting at home one night watching The Office, the American version, which I love, and I thought, hey, ChatGPT, could you write me an episode of The Office, but where everyone in The Office is lawyers? And it did a great job of producing a script of that. It was very funny with just the right styles. It's great at that. But you ask it a fairly basic legal question where it has to sort of draw on external knowledge is what we'd be asking it to do. It's not great at that. Um, and so I think it, where ChatGPT potentially has more promise, not necessarily today, but very soon, is in the um, – here is the legal framework that we're operating within. Draft the letter, draft the pleading, sort of create the content as opposed to answer the question. Colin, one of the other concerns or complaints I've heard about ChatGPT is this concern about bias in the responses. Uh, a, a common example is ideological bias. Mm -hmm. So is this a concern for the legal profession and what can be done about that issue? I, th I think the concern begins with the degree of reliance that, that the user puts on it, whether that user is a lawyer or a member of the public. Uh, the, the the bias can come in several forms. Uh, some could be expectations about roles, uh, gender roles, uh, racial stereotypes, and others. Other biases could be in terms of it was exposed to you know probably 100 times more American law than Canadian law. So when you're asking a general legal question, say, you know, what is the principle of ABC in circumstance one, two, three, uh, it's more likely than not to draw on its understanding of American law. So the, the, the biases come in, in a variety of forms. So there is there is a trust but verify element uh, associated with this, but it's the, the way I've suggested others approach it is assume it is a well-meaning but you know, slightly undereducated person who works for the other side. They're not your best employee that you've hired. They're not your newest employee. They're the employee of the other side who's not trying to deceive you, but maybe doesn't quite have it all right. So apply that level of scrutiny to the outputs and you'll, you'll be more likely to spot the inherent bias in what you receive. Uh, Monica, one of the other things that I have as a concern is that ChatGPT, you know, it might not be up to date, right? It, the, the law changes very, very rapidly. Uh, and if you are making submissions in court, you should probably, before you stand up, check to make sure nothing has changed, you know, the week before you, you stand up before a judge. But how rapidly does ChatGPT get updated for things like developments in important case law? Um, is that something that people should be concerned about as well? Yeah, uh, it's a it's a good concern. So the GPT 4.0 is up to date to 2021. So it's not going to be current to what's happening today. So you, I, I would recommend not using it for legal research. What I think is the opportunity or what we're going to see in the future is where big companies like Thomson Reuters, LexisNexis, which have a repository of case law or any company that has this repository of case law is using that and leveraging the generative AI in their systems. And then we're going to be more confident about the accuracy, the results, the output, um, and the and that it being up to date. Um, but right now you can't rely on ChatGPT. Just in, a, in about 30 seconds, Monica, one of the things that I have noticed is that ChatGPT doesn't actually provide source information for a lot of things. I mean, I don't get a link yeah. that I can click necessarily. Any any comment on that in about 20 seconds? 
Yeah, that, that's absolutely correct. And sometimes even the cases that they cite are totally made up cases. <laughs> so you have to be really careful. It's a people yes. pleaser, just wants to give you an answer. <laughs> we've, gotta right. go, we've gotta go to commercial break, but we'll be right back. 